What the heck is this? Oh my goodness. All right, well, that's how you start off an episode. <laughs> Welcome to episode 49. Oh my god, I'm so happy. Well, I did not expect my very first drop at Care Pack to be the pet. Let's go ahead and inspect it. Let's take a look at what this pet looks like. Oh my goodness, dude. Wow, that is so freaking amazing. I'm so happy about this. This is actually my very first boss pet. I've gotten very lucky with skilling pets and things like that, but never from a boss before. If I had to pick one, I'd say Carapac is definitely up there. Um, this is way too cool. Oh, interesting. This pet actually has a couple of different versions. It has its normal uh, appearance, which I have, and then the second appearance here, which requires killing Carapac a thousand times in hard mode. So we're very far away from that, but it's pretty cool that they have an option. You know, I really am just continuing the trend of getting lucky with things that are cosmetic. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying when it comes to things that actually provide utility and usefulness, no shot. But cosmetics, I'm all over it. Anyway, we got to go for the back to back. Let's see. We can get a little lucky again. That'd be cool. Wow, bro, seriously? No back-to-back? -back? Yo, this game is just, like, I don't know. We need bad luck mitigation. We need, like, this is ridiculous, man. All right, well, that was an extremely exciting intro to the episode. However, we need to do something a little bit less exciting, but still exciting. We need to figure out how to get these keys and get this in Candomatic. So it looks like the first thing we're going to need to do is clear this barricade so we can get more of the keys. We're going to need level 83 archaeology, which, well, that's going to take quite some time, but let's get to it. Ooh, nice. I just got this uh, Ooglog Wellspring, which actually gives you the endurance relic power, which when it's activated, it makes it so that your run energy never drains. So there's probably some really good uses for that. That's pretty awesome. Oh, man. I don't know. A quick four hours of work later. There's 83 archaeology. Let's get to work on this Imkandomatic. So now we can finally excavate this barricade and then uh, we can go about getting the rest of the keys. You need, like I said, 12 keys in total. I think most of them are pretty easy to get. Uh, and then we can solve the mystery and make ourselves the Matic within the forge. Bro, I've said it before, I'll say it again. When RuneScape 3 does graphics right, Oh my goodness, it looks so good. I love the new dig sites. Like, the scope of this area is just so much bigger than anywhere else in the game. It is absolutely beautiful, truly. Anyway, so far, I've gotten these three keys. Um, some of them are, like, pretty straightforward. You get them right away. And then other ones are a bit more RNG-based, it seems. So we'll see how long this actually ends up taking us. All right, so for this next key, apparently we got to do a bit of fishing, which I didn't expect. <laughs> this is actually pretty cool, man. This is pretty fun. All right, so after we go through this tunnel here, that should be all of the keys that we need to unlock the forge in the center of this area. Okay, yep, just one at a time. We're getting all those keys in. Okay. All right, cool. So apparently I come in here, pull the lever. Um, oh, there's another hand of glory. Cool. And uh, now I can bring my Imkendo metal pieces here with our uh, second dragon matic and figure out how to make one of these matics. Um, okay, so I'm not quite sure what to do here. Uh, there's a normal furnace, and it seems to be an anvil. Pickaxe of earth and song. Yeah, that's not the one I'm looking for, though. Oh, my bad. We have a special anvil in the corner here. I see. All right, I'm unsure what the seed I just got does, but there we go. That is the Imkandomatic, the next tier. Um, I believe later on down the road, we can actually combine this with our crystal matic to make the, the next tier after that. So pretty cool. Let's go augment this and, uh, get it set up. Yo, wait, uh, did you know that you're supposed to ask people to like, comment and subscribe, uh, for your video? That's how you make it successful on YouTube. Uh, you should probably tell them to go and check out your Twitch channel too. Like do all that stuff, dude. Okay. Yep. Thanks guys. What the heck? I was just doing some racks and, uh. I guess killing its uh, first form got me a defense level, which got me a combat level up to 135. That's kind of hilarious. All right, and there we go. That was a rack scene number 50. Um, still none of the pieces of the leg to actually go with my fang, but maybe we can get lucky right now. That would be kind of cool. No, sir. So one thing that I actually really need to work on is overcharging my Shadow Pontifex ring. We currently have it fully upgraded to tier 6, however, when you put 5,000 of each of these animas into it, it basically makes its effect passive, so you don't need to wear it. 
Now, obviously, I have 5,000 of all the animas except for full. Um, so I think what we're actually going to do is I'm going to go into, like, the Zuck fight. I'm not going to go all the way for Zuck or anything like that, but I'm just going to acclimate myself to the waves because apparently you actually get quite a bit of the full anima while you're doing that. So I'm not going to lie, I really have no idea what to expect here. I'm assuming this is just going to be really, really difficult fight caves. I guess we can go ahead challenge. All right, that's wave one down. I'm assuming there's like safe spots and ways to actually do this, but uh, maybe I'll actually go and watch a guide to see a more efficient way to go about doing this. I'm sure there's a spot to stand or something similar to fight caves and stuff that make this a bit easier. All right, we're actually doing okay. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever really mentioned this, but I hate wave combat. I hate fight caves. I hate fight kiln. I hate the inferno in old school. And whenever I need to go for Zuck here, I know this is uh, just not my favorite type of content. I hate the endurance of it all, you know? Oh, very interesting. This mob here needs to be stunned before it can be damaged. And I'm assuming if this bar goes to full, then I'll need to re-stun it to damage it again. Otherwise, it starts healing. That's kind of cool. Never seen that mechanic before. Now, this is wave four. And I feel like people always say you want to farm wave four for the uh, anima. Your body fills with igneous energy, activating igneous vengeance. Okay. Um, but I don't understand how you'd stay on wave 4, because now won't it just be wave 5? Once charged with enough igneous energy, you can unleash it towards Zuck to stagger and then attack him. Sick, dude. I did 14,000 damage. <laughs> Wait, this is still wave 4? Oh, do you get to wave 5 by getting all 600,000 of his health down? So that's how you stay here and farm it. Okay. Alright, makes sense. I can probably do this for a while. Okay, I got to wave 5. <laughs> so I'm assuming to farm wave 4, you just um, don't damage Zuck. And you can just stay there um, indefinitely. And yeah, it's really not too bad. But yeah, I went to wave 5 and uh, yeah, I got murdered. <laughs> Oh, nice. Okay, so just from the little time I was in there, we already got 600 um, anima and uh, all this other stuff. So let's keep at it. Try and get 5,000. All right, so I've spent almost a full hour in here. As you can see, I have three minutes left. I've been super AFK, like barely paying attention. Um, hopefully we have up to 5,000. I'm going to head out here and check as soon as we finish this up. All right, well, that actually took a little bit longer than expected, but we now have 5,000 of each anima, um, do I just charge? The ring is already fully charged. Okay, I think I actually need to go to an NPC for this. My man, Wahizietl. <laughs> this is the guy I gotta talk to, apparently. Upgrade your Shadow Pontifex ring to a passive state. Yes, please. There it is, the Elder Ring fully upgrade. This is beautiful, because now we can bring a Luck Ring with us and uh, not have to worry about bringing this with us whenever we're doing Krosis or... Carapac, so it's beautiful. Wait a second. Apparently there's something else I can do. I can just right click and imbue my ring because I've actually finished Extinction. Remember a long time ago when I said there's a bunch of upgrades from that quest and I still keep finding more? Well, here's another. It gives you a plus three prayer bonus. It teleports you to Ayaya. It gives you tier three luck instead of two. All kinds of weird little upgrades from that, but I don't know. Awesome, man. We take that. Hey, there it is. That is level 80 runecrafting from a Tears of Guthix, which is actually level 80 in all of our skills. Base 80s. Um, I mean, besides a few skills, we're actually pretty close to base 90s as well. Anyway, it is time I finally go and use all my gold stone spirits. I thought I had way more than just 1,200. This kind of sucks. But down here in the Living Rock Cavern, as long as you're wearing the uh, full golem outfit, the uh, creatures won't attack you, and you can get a bunch of gold ore. Now, we need gold bars because we need it for necklaces, for porters. We need it for slayer rings so we can get enhancing components. So, all kinds of stuff, really. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and get as much gold ore as I can. Okay, we've gone and done it. Only took maybe an hour, hour and a half, and that's uh, 2,600 gold ore. Now, I'm not going to smelt all of these right now, but these are just going to be really good to have in the ore bank whenever I need enhancing components or whatever I may need some jewelry for. <laughs> what? Oh, dude, I put on the recorder because I was like, there's no way nothing's going to happen. That's another Dark Onyx core. That's our second one. I'm going to get lit up in the comments. Oh, my God.
All right, so I'm not going to lie, I've gotten pretty lucky with these two Dark Onyx cores, but just take a look at the requirements that are needed to actually upgrade these items. I need Saren components, Crystal Tool Seeds, Corporeal components, which I think is Corp Beast, so we're still a long way from actually upgrading them, but I'm pretty happy to get two because that's basically all of them I really need. The third one isn't as useful, so... You know, speaking of Saren components, I think I'm just going to finish up my Rax kills for today, and then we're actually going to go back to Hellweir. I could still use the orb, and uh, any extra drops we get will just be Saren components that we can put towards the Dark Fossa Grace. So, well, that's our plan for today. Hey, what's up? Editing Dots is here. I'm currently um, fishing, as you can see, but I have to say something. I did learn later on that Saren components don't actually come from Hellweir. They come from, like, crystal tools and things like that. Uh, that's my bad. I just made sense in my brain. Saren is like always hell weird, but uh, not Saren components. So, all right. Well, I guess that's going to be all my racks for today. I've killed 60 and I have a fang, so I'm not really complaining, but I still haven't gotten a single leg piece. It'd be really nice to get one of those, but uh, yeah, that's 60 racks completed. All right, well, Hellweir still sucks. Um, that was our Reaper assignment completed. We're up to 535 Hellweir kills. I'd feel a lot better about this boss if the normal drops weren't just so bad. But anyway, there is something we need to work on right away here. I need to do the Mauritania Medium Diaries. The reason being, I made a bunch of Blood Runes the other day, and uh, people let me know that if you do the Mauritania Medium Diaries, you actually have a higher percent chance of each Pure Essence turning into two Blood Runes. It's like 10% or something, so that's not bad at all. Let's go see what we need to do. So the worst part about this, which I completely forgot because this is also a step in old school, is obviously we need to harvest uh, these mushrooms here from the mushroom patch. This can take up to four hours, apparently. Uh, but I'm thinking that we'll just go ahead and do the rest of these um, while we wait. And then uh, when four hours are up, we can come harvest these and we'll be good to go. I don't know if you guys remember, but back in the day when I did uh, temple tracking to get my lumberjack outfit, it took me forever to get these undead lumberjacks to show up. And now this is my second one in this medium track. It is so annoying. You never get them when you need them, man. All right, per usual achievements, um, a complete pain. However, we go ahead, cast Teleconnect Grab on this pickled brain, and there we go. That is all of the achievements except for the mushrooms, um, which we'll come get whenever those are done growing. So in the meantime, um, apparently there's some more rewards from Yeti Town, which uh, it's been a while since we've been there on this account. Apparently, once you're base 80s with all of your stats, you can get these frozen snow implings. You can go ahead and thaw it. And there we go. We can pick 50,000 experience in whatever skill we want. Easy 50,000 Herblore XP. I know there's a way to check, like, all the remaining quest rewards that you get after the quest is actually completed. I think it's in the achievements tab somewhere. One day we'll have to go through there and actually go and pick them all up. All right, we were so ridiculously close to a Herblore level that it felt just criminal not to get it, but that is level 98 Herblore, which means we can actually make Supreme Overloads, I believe they're called, and they're just a better version of Overloads, but essentially you have to make Overloads, and then with those Overloads, use Super Potions. It's a whole thing. You just use so many different potions, but yeah, we can make those now. 900k, that's insanity. But uh, yeah, now we can go ahead and mix our Overload with a Super Set, and that's how you make the Supreme Overloads. That's a ridiculous amount of Herblore to go into one potion, but uh, it actually gives you plus two levels over a normal overload. So I guess we're going to want a lot of these at some point. Um, I'm not going to work on those right away here, but uh, definitely a future plan. As per usual, every single episode, we're trying to get a little bit closer to Sliske's endgame. Um, I think this time I want to do the Death of Chivalry. It doesn't seem to have any other requirements. It's actually a free-to-play quest, so it should be interesting. Fully voice acted. Um, Apparently, it's quite uh, theatrical, so let's go check it out. <laughs> Not this dude. Anybody but this dude. All right, Sarah Dahman. How's it going, brother? So I guess this quest actually replaced the original Black Knight's Fortress, and um, I gotta say, the original quest has some charm. Don't get me wrong, but this is actually pretty awesome. It's a lot more dark. Is it just a coincidence that her name is Dawn? which is just the word wand rearranged and she stole the wand. What is this? Hogwarts Legacy? But no, this uh, this quest is amazing so far. It's like a movie, man. This quest is awesome. All right, well, I mean, this is a really easy boss fight, but at the same time, it's pretty cool. Um, the ads and everything seem to scale with your level, so I'd imagine that it represents a little bit of a challenge, if not really, no matter what level you do this quest at. 
All right, so this here should be the quest complete. We're going to stick around because apparently there's some uh, post-quest experience we could pick up. So as you can see in this room here, you just come to these closed coffins, you uh, open them up, and you get some XP rewards. Okay, well, first of all, we get this combat XP lamp, which I guess I'll put into summoning. It's only 3,500 XP. But also we get this ancient prayer lamp, which is 60,000 prayer XP, so not too bad. What is this? Gilded cabbage? Place? Oh, I've seen this, where you can kick it or whatever. Okay, interesting. Is it just like a toy? Huh. Cool. Well, we got a new personal record at Hellweir for a minute and 45. We're up to 579 Hellweir. Um, the last clip you guys saw from me was about 12 hours ago. I have done so much PVM today, and I have absolutely nothing to show for it. I did two or three hours of Carapac, I did two hours of Rax, I did three hours of Hellweir. It's been a long day, and uh, yeah, we didn't get anything, but that's how it goes sometimes. So, the Fort Furin 3 update comes out in like 24 hours. Now, I haven't been paying too much attention um, to the live streams or anything really about the update. I don't really know too much about it just yet, but... I guess everyone is buying up limestone. Apparently, you're going to need lots of limestone. So, as I'm sure most of you know, there is a shop here that sells limestone bricks as well as normal limestone. I wonder if I should just buy all of these. Um, I might do that. We'll see. All right. Well, we should have plenty of limestone for now. In the meantime, there's a couple more quests still remaining for Sliske's Endgame. And one of those is actually called Hero's Welcome. So while we're waiting for this Fort Furin 3 update, I might as well go get some questing done. Let's go check this one out. I actually had no idea that there was more questing to do in the Fremenic area. This is pretty awesome, actually. Damn, dude. I want that armor. That guy looks sick. Look at this guy, that is so cool. Wow, check this out. A RuneScape interface that you can actually drag and drop. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. All right, it appears we've got ourselves a couple of fights here. Um, as per usual, the wiki probably is overestimating us, but it does say they can be a little bit challenging, so wish me luck. Ooh, mechanics, you love to see it. All right, well, this should be the first one down. That definitely wasn't too difficult, although considering it's a quest boss, the fact that I even used food is uh, kind of amazing, so. All right, for this final boss fight, we had to come down here to the Brimhaven dungeon. Apparently, this boss is going to actually have phases, um, so, you know, we're basically doing Telos at this point. Wow, that guy is pretty ugly. Okay, apparently I want to mine these pillars. I'm on fire. Wait, is this the old mining animation? Look at this. That's the old school mining. What the heck? That is so weird. All right, there we go. That was all four pillars. Um, and apparently we go to phase two now. So, holy, that's a lot of health. Oh, we got to lure him into falling rocks. Oh my goodness. <coughs> all right, yeah, that was not an easy fight. Um, that was actually a little bit scary. We cut it a little bit close. I used all my food, uh, but it was kind of cool. And there we go. That is the quest completed. I actually really enjoyed that quest. I love quests where the boss fights are just a little bit more engaging, but uh, we get 10,000 Smithing, Mining, Slayer, and Divination XP. And what is this? The ability to produce 5% more runes when runecrafting. I had no idea that was even a reward. That is actually super useful. That's amazing. Anyway, folks, as some of you may or may not know, I've been doing a ton of AFKing while uh, I've been working on my group Iron Man, which is going to be out on Friday, three days after this video comes out. But yeah, I've got all kinds of raw fish here in the bank, so we're going to work on getting some cooking levels. Um, but that's going to be it for this one, guys. I will see you all in the next episode, starting with the Fort Furin 3 update, which I think is just going to be a really good update, and I'm pretty excited for it. But uh, yeah, I want to say thanks, a massive thanks to all of you who made it to the end of the video. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget a like, a comment, a subscription. Those things help a bunch. But I will catch you all in the next one. Later.